Hello everybody, this is Ableton Certified Dubspot Instructor and Course Designer Thavius Beck. And in this video, I'd like to show you a couple new features in Ableton Live 9 and how I've been implementing them into my workflow. What we're currently looking at is the latest beta of Ableton Live, and I have one audio track in the session view with one audio clip. In this audio clip is a drum loop that I have already warped properly, looped for two bars. I've even quantized it just to make sure that it's totally on beat, the notes are right on the grid. And my intention is to slice this, create a drum beat with it, and then use my arpeggiator to change the quantization and swing of that drum beat on the fly. All right, and then we're going to record that into a clip using the session view automation. So, with all that said, let's get started. Like I said, this has already been warped, looped. I have a bunch of warp markers here. I'll play this clip for you. Classic drum break. So what I want to do is slice this to a new MIDI track. So I right click, slice a new MIDI track is sitting above all these new beautiful options, which we're not going to touch on right now, but will soon. And we're going to create one slice per warp marker. And my slicing preset, instead of using the built-in preset, I'm going to use my own custom preset. You can learn to make your own custom presets as well. If you just check out our YouTube channel, you'll find a video where I'm talking about that. But, alas, I digress. Let's delete this MIDI clip that was created once I sliced my stuff to a new MIDI track. I've sliced these pieces into a sampler instrument. There's all my slices. And I'm going to double-click into this MIDI track right there to create a blank one-bar MIDI clip. And now I'm going to start just drawing some notes in here and create a pretty simple drum pattern, all right? So let's hit play here. I'm going to arm the metronome. We'll turn it down a bit. I know C1 is where my first slice is, so that's a kick. I know I have a snare here somewhere. So I can actually arm my preview button here and then just hit the notes on the piano roll. Okay, F1. So F1, that will be my snare, F1 right there. Okay, so now, if I look in the bottom right-hand corner of this MIDI clip, I can see the resolution of the clip is 16th notes. Each line represents a 16th note. So I'm going to start placing some more uh, sounds in between the kick and snare, some of the hi-hats and percussion, to fill up the 16th notes in this grid. Okay. Okay, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but this is just a one bar loop right now. And if it just repeats like this forever and ever, it's gonna get very, very repetitive. So what I'd like to do is duplicate this loop and then maybe change something in the second bar so then it doesn't just sound as repetitive as a one bar loop would tend to be. So I'm gonna go over here, the left hand side of my screen in my clip view, there's a button that says duplicate loop. Once I hit this, this one bar loop automatically turns into a two bar loop just with one button press. Very convenient. So I'm going to play this loop again. And in the second bar, I'm going to add some more stuff here. Maybe move some other notes around. Okay, cool. So now we have a two bar drum loop. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to take these two bars and duplicate it again. So we have a four bar clip. The reason why is because I want to record changes that I make to the arpeggiator that I'm going to throw on here so I can change the timing and rhythm of these drums and then record that in real time directly into the clip using session view automation. So let's do that. I'm going to go to my MIDI effects here. I'm going to grab my arpeggiator, which is normally used for more melodic elements. And we're going to drop that on our drums. Now, Quickly, let's look at our MIDI clip again. We're dealing with a MIDI clip with a resolution of 16th notes. The notes are playing every 16th note. There's something going on every 16th note just about. So we keep that in mind because when we're looking at the arpeggiator, the thing that we're going to tweak to change the timing and quantization of our drums is the sync rate of the arpeggiator. So I don't really want to go any higher than 16th uh, notes on my sync rate because if I do, it's going to cause notes to repeat and play more than once and it's going to mess up the rhythm a bit. So let me just give you an idea of how this works. All right, I'm going to play these drums. Now let's turn the arpeggiator on.
Okay, right now there's no change, but let's change the sync rate to 112. Okay, so now we got eighth note triplets going on. That's the gate. Let's change this to eighth notes. What about sixth notes or quarter note triplets? Okay, and we can do all that on the fly. More importantly, we can automate that. Okay, and also it's worth pointing out this groove right here. You can change this and add some swing. So if I go to swing sixteenth. Eighth note swing going on, and we can keep it straight. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to record four bars of variation with this arpeggiator sync rate directly into my clip. In order to do that, all I have to do this circle button right here replaces the OVR button, the overdub button from Live 8. This essentially is overdub in MIDI clips, and it also allows you to record any automation directly into MIDI clips or audio clips uh, right here in the session view. So once I arm this, you're going to notice my launch button here turns red. And then any parameter changes that I make will be recorded directly into this clip. Let's do it. All right, bam. Just like that, you see that automation has been recorded. You see the red circle right there? If I double click on the MIDI clip, hit the clip envelope button, the last thing I touched, and you see the automation recorded right there. Pretty hot sauce, man. So just like that, I've taken a drum break. I've been able to slice it. I made a one bar loop. I was able to make that one bar loop into a four bar loop just by pressing the duplicate loop button twice. Then from there, I dropped an arpeggiator onto my drum track and I was able to automate the sync rate simply by recording it directly into a session view clip. Ableton Live 9 really helps to improve your workflow by doing little simple things like that. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to see you guys use this technique and make amazing music. Again, my name is Thavius Beck, Ableton Certified Dubspot Instructor and Course Designer with Ableton Live 9, signing off. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.